is Dr. Uh, Sofra. Uh, she's from Hong Kong and uh, her topic today is about body tanning, circadian body, biological time reverse mechanisms and neurofrequency signaling. So Dr. Welcome and you can proceed. Okay, actually I'm not from Hong Kong, I'm from Greece, no. and I just recently moved to Hong Kong, as you can see, I don't look like anything. And I don't really anything. Well, thank you very much for inviting me. I'm thrilled to be here. Um, I'm going to be talking about the, the main subject of this section, the circadian skin, and I'm going to give you some more information. And I'm going to be talking about how we can use the circadian clocks for body tuning, but you know, it can uh, to enhance health primarily. So what uh, we propose here is so that health, the optimum functioning of our bodies, is anti-aging, and health and anti-aging depends on three factors. Well, many of them, of course, but uh, three uh, categories, if you like proper functioning of biological circadian clocks, signaling, and again, a lot of foods are involved with signaling as well, and time reversal mechanisms, that's the most interesting one. And all time reversal mechanisms in our bodies are at the molecular level. I'll speak about this a little bit more uh, shortly. Let's talk about the timing dimension first. Every single cell in our body is controlled by its own clock. It helps every cell to figure out when to use energy, when to rest, when to repair DNA and replicate it. Now, this biological timekeeping is actually a genetic process and we share it with animals, bacteria, with, with everything. All life mechanisms have biological clocks. The circadian skin has been, has surfaced in the most recent years because of uh, the, we studying the circadian clocks in terms of cellular proliferation, stem cell functions, tissue regeneration, and aging. Now, due to the accessibility, the skin is such a large organ in vivo imaging techniques uh, have been developed and can be readily applied to study the circadian clocks, and therefore a lot more science can be developed that is quite accurate by studying the skin and studies have already linked the skin circadian clocks with the control of UVB-induced DNA damage in skin cancers. Now, the circadian clocks are primarily known to be located in the su suprachiasmatic nucleus. Uh, however, there are <coughs> biological clocks throughout our bodies, and now we have identified the biological circadian clocks in the cellular level. Now, at the cellular level, we have a range of clock genes. It's a very interesting concept. Daily clock genes interactions causes protein level fluctuations in the cell, influence its activity, and the clock genes pre-program proteins to guide cells when to use energy, when to rest, when to repair. It's very, very important. So the timing dimension is extremely interesting and very important. Now, the importance of signaling as combined with this timing dimension makes things even more interesting. Now, healing is an interaction of complex cascade of cellular cosmeostasis, inflammation, proliferation, migration. All of these are timed. They're all within with respect to time. And all of these interactions are initiated and paused by signaling. And initiation pausing, that's time dimension. As such, signal interactions are defined confined by specific time intervals. <coughs> For example, psoriasis now, we know that uh, circadian skin clocks play a very important role in our body's immune functions. As psoriasis is uh, obviously uh, associated with that. Another very important illness is uh, cancer. Uh, circadian clocks are very much associated with uh, cells becoming cancers, but more recent theories are postulating that, in fact, these cancer cells have lost the signals 
of proper mitosis, they've lost their way. They've, they've kind of uh, lost time pretty much and they turn into teratomas and uh, tumors or cancers. So now why do we have to focus on the timing of the signaling at the cellular level? The reason why is because molecular mechanisms hold the secret of time reversal. It's a very interesting thing. It, this time reversal routine is, is basically uh, something that molecular mechanisms do all the time. And yet, if one of our organs breaks down, it can never go back together again. If you break a cup, it will never be reintegrated to make a whole cup again. It's a very interesting thing. And then, if you look at our um, um, molecular mechanisms in our body, um, can go back in time. However, we are more like a gestalt. So a gestalt is more than the sum of its parts. It's a very interesting concept. When it cannot, you cannot break down a person into its parts. You cannot break down personality into its parts or a brain. It's a lot more than just the neurons. We're a lot more than just the neurons we're composed from. So that's why we cannot go back in time as a whole. However, if you look, say, for example, in free radicals, what is a free radical? It's just missing an electron. So you give a free radical the electron that it's missing, and it becomes a stable molecule. Complete time reversal. You take that away, it goes back to being free radical. It can go back and forth in time endlessly. Other mechanisms, it's ATP it starts from AMP, which is mono, Phosphates, it has one phosphate. You give it two phosphates, it becomes ADP, which is energy that is stored. You give it three phosphates, it becomes ATP, which is the main energy currency that our bodies are using for several functions, building muscle, uh, working with proteins. All kinds of functions need ATP, which is basically this continuously time reversal process, routinely. GAAP, that's G proteins, are very important for amplification of signals. And again, they go from GAP for one phosphate to DP, two phosphates. So this phosphate adding and subtracting, basically, breaking down and reintegrating makes a whole difference. And again, like I said, you have a cup, you break it, it's broken, gone. And yet these things keep going back and forth in time. So if we want to look at anti-aging, we need to focus at molecular mechanisms and trigger these molecular mechanisms to form a sort of uh, anti-aging, a true anti-aging. And the, the problem with our bodies, it starts that the protons and electrons are integrated to form molecules, the molecules uh, form proteins, uh, sensory proteins and action proteins are interacting to guide the cells. Cells communicate with each other. The nerve cells are communicating with the brain. The brain communicates with everything else. It becomes a gestalt. It becomes more than the sum of the neurons that it's composed of. So a gestalt is a whole form of parts working together. And everybody knows you have a car. The car needs tuning. But the, our bodies as a whole also need this tuning process. It needs to basically reorganize the signals so that all signals are working together harmoniously. That's what tuning is. All the parts are working together harmoniously. And this is what signaling neurofrequency science is. Basically, it uh, studies what resonance signals can pretty much tune up our system to optimize its functioning. So cellular signaling technology, the neurofrequency as we call it, is a science of investigating and proposing solutions on how to undertake and fulfill a sort of body tuning, if you like. I know it's kind of a common concept, but it gives the actual richness of what it implies. So basically what it does, it fills in the signals that have broken down. What do we mean by signals are broken down? Okay, here this a signal that has broken down. So you say, you see, the, the top phrase, you don't know what it means. And what aging is, is that lost parts of a signal turn into nonsense, it turn into incorrect signals. When we're some, it's like somebody who cannot talk, that has bubbles in their mouth, they cannot communicate. 
So now, if you put in the correct letters, because everything in the body, DNA, proteins, consists of this lettering thing and all frequencies that are interrelated. So you can put in the signals, replace the signals, and then you have a phrase that can be understood. So nonsense becomes meaningful. And it's the meaningful that is health. It's the meaningful <coughs> that is anti-aging. So this transmission does, uh, is happening through voltage-driven waveform signals, or they can, you can do it through ion channels by pretty much dilating the ion channels. And you can do that in certain specific energies, extremely, extremely low. I'll show you how low they are. There's a book that was written called Electron-Gated Ion Channels uh, three or four years ago. And at these energies, the ion channels are amplified and you can pass signals through. Let me give you some examples of cellular communication. Uh, or from the outside to the inside. Ishita Saki and his colleagues demonstrated that vibrations can occur in the cochlea in response to sound, not even frequencies through the skin, but even sound. And Syria et al. in 2008 showed that resonant signals resulted in a rapid cell concentration, contraction, and a subsequent uh, cell spreading as observed by phase uh, microscopy. Now, cellular communication, other examples, comes from uh, Keith Norris, showed that cells communicate through a, through, without any proteins, without any neurotransmitters. You can have a cell in one area and another cell in another area, and you can see a communication, you can see the cells bending, and there is a, a, a burst of photons that comes out. And it's a very interesting phenomenon that it happens like uh, with telecommunication, pretty much. This is uh, a, a very interesting process that we also see in electrons, and it, a lot of quantum physics has focused on this concept of entanglement. If you have time, you can go on the internet and check it out, just uh, entanglement, quantum physics, and you're gonna understand the concept. But this is what we see in the cells. This is distant communications that have nothing to do connecting them. And there is, what aging is, the new concept of aging, is that it's diminished protein to protein communications. So the new aging has to do with lack of communications. Diminished communications is what aging is. And how do we do that? There are several techniques, microscoping and other, they're quite expensive. There is some new techniques now from uh, Sweden, Salah University, that they do it with proteins and antibodies of how they bind together and they look at communications that way. This is what we're talking about, the energies open the ion channel. Look at the, uh, uh, I mean, the uh, voltage is 0.056 microvolts, and that is uh, in uh, temperature of uh, 20 Celsius and 100 uh, hertz and 2,000 of, of ohms. So it's extremely, extremely minuscule. So you will not feel, if you have a treatment with something that can produce such an energy, you're not gonna feel anything. But this is exactly what you need to basically open up the channels and pass the signals to. That's how you can stimulate uh, the uh, molecular mechanisms. This is some results that we got from a necrotic wound to a wound that is turning um, alive again. This is a diabetic wound and uh, the healing after one year there was no reoccurrence. That's another wound that had complete difficulty healing and uh, it healed within uh, a few treatments. That's a, uh, of somebody cut their hand and within a week there was very, so one minute left. Uh, very uh, good uh, improvement. This is a result of chronic psoriasis, uh, more chronic psoriasis results. Uh, accident wound, uh, that's uh, eczema, and that is a, a facial uh, wound that and it's uh, um, recovery. Now, some of uh, recovery factors are the J and K pathway. There's a lot of research that was done with that. J and K pathway alleviates toxicity, so that's another aspect of. Uh, this image that you uh, reduce toxicity. 
and um, experimental studies have found a significant difference of 0.05 between controls and experimental subjects when they looked at the JNK pathway. This uh, JNK pathway is a signaling pathway that has different signals intertwined. But there are other factors like cytokines, growth factors that are involved into this uh, process. There is um, uh, DDR collagen too that is involved in this process. And that's again all this signaling, but signaling within a time matrix Protein assays are also involved. Connections are very, very important in wound healing. Down regulation of uh, CX4, I'm almost done. Uh, 43 is also very important. So basically, what we're looking for is we're looking at signaling that and how aging affects that. And we're looking at how signaling within a time frame can actually affect us. So basically, timing determines the alignment of the signals and is as important as, and you have to have a lot of signals, since all of these factors can be involved in, in healing. So you need thousands and thousands of signals within specific times. And again, the, the concept of body tuning is, if we wanna call it body tuning, is uh, a dynamic matrix of signals within discrete timings designed to reinstate optimum cell communications. So we need the matrix of very large variety of signals that is delivered within specific time intervals. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very interesting and uh, really circadian and nice checks and nice shifts. Uh, but I would like to introduce the last hour speaker and uh,